Hey everybody and welcome to the company's expert live. So let's talk Gibson guitars, Gibson guitars and what lies ahead for Gibson. Now there is an article that recently came out that was featured in guitarworld.com and it talks about the guitar industry is on a major uptick with many brands and sellers reporting record numbers in 2020. So what this is saying that is that the guitar magazine and guitar publication says that guitars are selling better than they ever have. That's awesome. Now, far be it for me to challenge this. Uh, I don't have the statistical and sales data available for this, but put it this way, I would be amazed if this turned out to be pinpoint accurate. I'll just, I'm just going to say that. Uh, Gibson is a, is a company that has been beset by several problems in recent years, and in particular, I believe they have three main problems. The first one is debt. They have a ton of debt, and even after emerging from bankruptcy only a couple of years ago, it doesn't seem to have gotten that much better in that department. Their second problem is that of conformance quality. That means that the physical products, the guitars, are not that well made. A lot of people are complaining that they receive their product and it is not well made. There is uh, some cosmetic problems with it and some more serious problems with it. Uh, and finally, Gibson has the problem of poor customer perceived quality. That means that they're producing products that not a lot of people like. You know, in this case, they're producing a lot of guitars that a lot of guitar buyers feel is the wrong color, the wrong style, the wrong features, and the wrong approach. So Gibson, in my opinion, has these three major problems. And uh, I just want to say right off the hop that I'm a huge fan of Gibson. I've been a huge fan of Gibson for 25 years, and I would like nothing better to see them regain their glory days where they're back on top, they're profitable, they're making great instruments, and they're making a lot of customers happy and delighted with their products. Now, let's talk about these problems. Number one, their debt. You know, how did Gibson get so much in debt? Well, what they did was they bought a lot of other companies. They had a CEO that, although this is a solid business management strategy in, in general, uh, which is to diversify your portfolio and gain synergies and reduce risk, unfortunately, they seem to uh, have not understood that the nature of this particular industry, in particular the guitar industry or the musical instrument industry, it seems to be that the goodwill does not follow the brand, it follows the particular product. So in the case of Gibson, just because you make great guitars doesn't mean that people will buy your electronics and view it as equally great. Uh, it tends to be more akin to starting over with each business you buy. You're starting from scratch and you have to build up that brand reputation and goodwill from scratch. So they bought a lot of these companies. They bought electronics companies, they bought amp companies, and they tried to create this uh, portfolio where it was all a family of products, and it doesn't seem to have worked. Guitar sales remained down. The sales of the other products also uh, were not spectacular and as a result after paying for all these they didn't get extra sales that gave them more revenue so they could pay off their debt so they ended up in massive debt and unfortunately in business when you're crushed under the weight of massive debt it really limits what you can do so it's like fighting with both hands behind tied behind your back unfortunately but that's their first major problem and in my opinion no amount of financial management or financial gymnastics will solve this problem directly. doesn't matter how much you refinance it. The solution has to come from elsewhere. Now, their second major problem is their conformance quality. Okay, their build quality. They produce instruments that uh, are priced as if they're top of the line, but when people get them, they notice scuffs, they notice cracks, they notice problems with the instrument um, because it's not put together particularly well and things of this nature. And this came to a head several years ago when Gibson famously or infamously put out some promotional materials in all their glossy glory that showed instruments that had a nick or ding or scuff or scratch or whatever you want to call it. And this was 
much ridiculed by their potential market on the internet. And uh, it was very embarrassing, and it's uh, surprising how this uh, wasn't scrutinized uh, on its way out and was allowed to be released. Uh, so very embarrassing. And it also tends to uh, support a lot of anecdotal uh, stories from customers who have purchased Gibson guitars in the last several years that claim that their guitar arrived with a crack in the pick guard or a scuff or the bridge put on backwards or, you know, other such issues that tend to suggest a conformance quality issue. So this conformance quality issue, you would think this would be the simplest of the three problems to fix. It's uh, a pretty paint by numbers solution to fix your conformance quality. There's a lot of quality programs out there and there's a lot of people skilled in implementing them. And all you really need is the person, the right person at the helm that can bring in these best practices and enforce them and monitor them. And bam, your quality problems are solved, or at least your conformance quality problems are solved. Now, their third problem, and I would argue their most important problem to solve, the, the biggest of the three, is their poor customer perceived quality. And this is where they're producing the wrong products. And as I said earlier, it's where they're producing guitars in particular that are the wrong style, the wrong color, with the wrong features, the wrong approach. They're producing things that their customers are not asking for. And consequently, they're not selling very well. And this was also demonstrated a couple of years ago with the robot tuners. They produce guitars that could tune themselves. And in theory, this is a sounds like a great idea, but in practice, as I understand, they were less than successful. And a lot of uh, guitar players that bought Gibson guitars complained. And uh, not only that, but they were making questionable decisions like they were going to apply these new features to all their products, including their old standards that had been selling strongly since the 1950s. They were going to apply to everything, so you could not get the classic product anymore. And this made a lot of people upset. Um, also, they've been accused of producing guitars that are ugly, producing guitars that nobody's asking for. Uh, they're not trendy, they're not cool, they're not uh, in line with the uh, trends and styles of the day. And this tends to suggest that the people that are driving product strategy at Gibson don't have their finger on the pulse of the market, they don't have their finger on the pulse of the customer, and they don't have their finger on the pulse of industry trends. So that tends to suggest you would want to replace these people who do have these qualities and are more in tune with these things. And uh, it is strange how even after the company emerged from bankruptcy, they're still in the view of a lot of their customers getting it wrong. So to me, this is the most glaring issue. And it seems like if you can solve this issue, the others will fall in line. If you can solve this issue and give instruments and, pro and other products that customers are asking for and they're wanting, and you can deliver on it, then a lot of other problems will be sorted out in the process. Things like debt. Eventually, you'll make headway and you'll overcome it. Now, uh, it's strange how uh, this has been the case. You know, uh, Gibson emerged from bankruptcy and uh, it was shown that their product strategy was false. They uh, tried to diversify. They tried to buy up all these little electronics companies and amp companies and things. And uh, to solve their debt problem, the obvious solution would be to divest these. And they have done some of that as part of the bankruptcy ruling, but I think they still have a ways to go. And just admit that in this business, you need to focus on your uh, main line first, which is your guitar business. And then if you wish to try and extend your success into other areas of electronics and ancillary businesses, uh, that would make more sense. Now, I know that everybody is a Monday morning quarterback, and it's easy for everyone to be a critic, and I'm no exception. Uh, but it seems to me that this would be the way forward for Gibson. Fix your customer perceived quality by replacing the people that drive the product strategy. Then fix your conformance quality issues by implementing uh, any number of well-known and tried quality programs. 
And then finally, if you strip down and you focus on these, your debt problem will eventually sort itself out because your sales are going up and your profits are going up and your defects are going down. So that would be my assessment of Gibson. I've been a fan for many years and I'm interested to see what the future holds for this company. I hope that they can solve this, uh, this issue or these issues and turn this company around. Nothing would make me happier. But I'm interested in what you think. Do you agree with any of this? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for listening this long. You guys are awesome. And I will see you on the next video. Take care.